I forgot my tie and my jacket, but it's okay. I just go like this, okay? We leave the workshop. Usually I never leave it. I'm always here in order that I have everything under control. I try to, it's very tough. Now we will just go out the workshop. It's not very far from here. And we go to the uh, tomb of Stradivari, which is very close by. And you can see it. And uh, then we go up the Piazza Roma. Oh, this is my car. Yeah, didn't uh, tell you this here. This is my, my Fiat 500. Yeah, most people know me already in 2004, 2005, I got this car. Uh, mainly, I was a little bit searching for this car, but the number plate was similar like my birthday. I'm born on the 8th of July of 1966, and with six, and with this great number plate, I had to buy it because on it. That's why I have <laughs> this is because of the cello. Here we are at the crossing of, of Piazza Roma, and then here down below we have the tomb of Stradivari. Tomb is the right word. Yeah. Or tomb, the tomb or the tomb, uh, tomb. Yeah. yeah, which actually is just a a small monument because on this square where we are moving right now, at the time of Stradivari, there was the isola. It was called the island, the isola, where there was the main center of town. And it was like a circle, all these tiny houses and workshops of craftsmen. And here you have the tomb of Stradivari with... This is actually has been found in the uh, basement of the museum, the original stone. And they made this uh, copy of it out of bronze. Or, yeah, and here this is actually the, the main uh, testimony how old Stradivari became. Born in 1648 and he passed away in 1737. At that time that was just like nowadays getting at least 150 years old. And he worked totally completely to the very last moment before he passed away. Uh, because 1737 you still have instruments signed with his name okay and for those who are very serious in violin making it's just tiny detail uh, nowadays a uh, master instrument is is uh, specified that an instrument which is from the very beginning to the very end is made by one person at the time of Stradivari he was very uh, good in what he was doing, he had the extremely craftsmanship and he had 15 people working in his workshop. So that was quite a big shop. If you just think that we are like three, four, five people in my workshop and then I have some people working outside. At that time, 15 people, certainly instead of a bandsaw to cut a, a back in two pieces, let's say, he had probably two guys with two saws. And even when the big trees arrived, probably they were hand cutting and splitting the wood. So that occupied already at least for two people work. And planing all the pieces, probably he had another person and we have an uh, electric plane or the, 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 the drill or things like this. But Still, it was a big shop and even at that time it was a big shop and he had a lot of success because he was making a lot of instruments for the court in France, decorating the instrument in the beginning of his career because in the first years up to 40 years more or less of his um, life, he was actually a decorator carving uh, nice uh, drawings inside the ribs. You know these decorated strats, right? And that was actually his profession. And by decorating instruments from the workshop of Amati, he probably discovered the violin, started to make slowly, slowly in his free time, that's what I guess, we only can guess a little bit, started to make instruments, decorated them in the beginning, and then slowly, slowly increased the number of instruments. And then at the total end of his life, he had made under his name approximately 1,200 instruments. Yeah? So he was really a busy, busy violin maker. Here, this is the main square. And as I told you, Napoleon bombed down everything, even this big building here, which, which was made then later on in the, in the 40s. Now I think we go straight up 
Piazza Gallina. We passed by where a good restaurant is. The restaurant is at the Cento, but today probably is closed because it's Monday. And then we go to the workshop of Vladimir Kubanzi. Now, you, you, as you might hear already, Vladimir Kubanzi is not a very Italian name, but you can call him Vladimiro. But Kubanzi remains Kubanzi. I remember when um, I first uh, came, this, we can talk in what? Yeah. Um, when I first came here, that um, you went by Eduardo. Eduardo? Your, your cello was, your Stein was cello Eduardo. Ah, Eduardo. Edgardo. Edgardo Ernesto Eduardo. Rus, yeah. And then like, um, and there's, there's all these Italian names of other, there's a, you, you, you make an Italian version of your name. Has, is that trend still going or, is, or you guys now go by your given name? I, I stopped name. Uh, writing Edgardo Ernesto. I just uh, write Ed, Edgar yeah. Russ and that's it, or Edgar E. Russ. Ernesto. It was at a certain point I had the impression that my name is not Italian enough. Yeah. But actually, nowadays people more and more focus on actually what the instrument actually is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not anymore a big deal. Okay. Indeed, 160 shops and 160 different ways approaching a final result which you hold in your hand which is just the instrument so it's more than only the instrument it's marketing it's uh, craftsmanship it's taste it's social media uh, and 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 chemistry research uh, there's no no limit and that's that makes the whole thing so nice so unique you wouldn't even imagine that it can be so 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 such a big variety of makers and people want always to put all the violin makers together in one pot and you know the violin makers is pretty difficult and here this is uh, the casa del violino by vladimiro kubanzi pronti ciao vladimir huh? this here we are immediately here in the workshop of vladimir he is a real artist Ciao Vladimir. Ciao, 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 come eh? stai? <laughs> che bella sorpresa! <laughs> Big surprise, a nice surprise here. Uh, I didn't tell him that we were coming and he's a little bit afraid, but this is nice, come on. Lascia, <laughs> lascia! <laughs> now he wants to clean up. What this is, is this? useless, come in. What is this here? Questo è una, una viola. Viola d'amore. This is a viola d'amore. That one was, was exhibited for many years actually in the museum, uh, the Museo del Violino, um, MDV, mm -hmm. on Piazza Marconi. He's a real, I would say, a real artist. Uh, originally, I, c I think he comes from Russia, right? Yes. Yes. From Moscow? Yes. Moscow, okay. And he came here to Cremona because also his uh, cousin, uh, was he a violin maker or is still a violin maker, um, Andre Schutz? And then he learned with Andre. You made also the violin making school? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So, and then a typical uh, evolution as a violin maker does. You know, you learn the profession, you work with somebody, and then slowly, slowly, you just open your own shop. And now it's not that easy, f like. Uh, you know, you open something like this and then it pops out to be like this. Now he is not, he was not prepared. Usually it's super clean. When I told you before that every maker has its own style and its own way of doing things, he, I think, is, is another great example of how you can approach violin making. And he, at a certain point, started before he closes an instrument, he draws on the back of the instrument something like this for instance is a, is a drawing directly on the wood a dragon yes it's a chinese too... dragon this is a, for a while in a limited edition autumn first seasons ah wants to make the four season this is autumn oh for for so for based on the vivaldi composition yes. so this is autumn yes oh wow it's beautiful ah i messo il bellissimo puntale Let's, this, look is, at this, ah, this is a new one. It's Lucky. made from a friend of ours uh, in Korea. Oh, Korea. And it's this. very heavy and has a specific sound. Uh, wow. So this is a cello. Let's get the cello. And inside this cello, 
you look there is oh, look at that there is the tower of Cremona oh, wow. inside your channel this is the working bench of Vladimir yes huh? This yeah. is just now, is now he tries to clean him. Actually, every time I come in here, I make jokes about his trust he has in a single rope, even so oh, it's I out of that. steel. But he tells me that he he changes the rope and then he puts the date. Now I don't really trust that much in one steel spring because I think it's it can go out of the wall and I'm talking about that because it happened to me once and so I will never hang up instruments like this even so it looks very nice but um, yeah I, <laughs> I, I would recommend to everybody out there not to hang their instruments on something like this mm. it looks wonderful until one day it comes down here we are now in Via Aselli it's a one-way road as you can see all the traffic goes through and this is the workshop of uh, Pasquale Sardone. And let's go inside and uh, we see what Pasquale makes with us here. Um, Pasquale, I think we have to wait. Pasquale Sardone, permesso, permesso. Ciao, Pasquale. Ti presento il mio amico Jonathan, Jonathan Humphreys. This is a small, uh, tiny workshop and he's living outside of town, similar in that area where I'm living in the countryside. And we cross each other very often. And then he also goes pretty often to fairs in Germany and in Shanghai. Now it's already a few years ago that we have been there, but... Uh, uh, it's, he's very pretty active and mainly works on cellos, I would say. Come dicevi quanti violini avevi fatto negli ultimi anni? Due forse. In the recent... Maybe two or three violins he made in the past few years. It just makes one cello after another. Why cellos? Because I have big hands. I'm a double, double bass player, you know? And I have a very big hands. And for me, violins is very small. <laughs> and no, it's my, my passion, cello. Okay. Yes, I like me cello. Beautiful. And this one? Yeah. This one is mine. Yes. Che modello è? Ruggeri. Ruggeri. Francesco Ruggeri. Uh huh. Yes. Interesting, huh? 1690. 1690. Yes, this, this scroll is not original model, but this one is original model. <laughs> yes, this is uh, from a, a Cusidice Calco Edgar. Okay. From a Chalk, not Chalk or, or, or original. A mold? A mold, yes, uh -huh. mold, Chalk mold. This is uh, it's a original. Ruggeri. Yes, this is Ruggeri. Yes, uh -huh. with this very small, this one a square, as, and not uh, like Stradivari. Uh -huh. Like, like the, this is Stradivari, it's called. What's the difference? Like, yeah, here this is very big this here, very big and this thing. is not square, while yes. here it is very small, the eye. And the, and the, the, the axis, la, lasse, uh -huh. lasse, is not la, la, like this, but uh, a little like this. Inclined, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Yes, it's not small. Uh, this is my personal uh, uh, finish, not Cremonese finish. Uh -huh. This one. Very yeah. short. But, uh, but the Ruggeri, inside. I, now I'm making this. Uh, this is very, very small in the uh, original Ruggeri model. What do you mean by Cremonese finish? Uh, ah. the, maybe here. Yeah. It's different. Even okay. me, I, myself, I'm learning here this, today. Uh, this ah, okay, is this is Cremonese. a little bit more, yeah, modern Cremonese, but a yeah. little too long, even for my taste. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what's over there on the this? It's very short. 
and that style that's more work. more his style but uh, even me, myself I, 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 I prefer like this I don't oh. like when these are like too yes. long you know okay well elegant for me yeah, it looks more natural yeah. yes this is my my model is braided uh, is braided, uh, inspired. inspired okay uh, uh, the work uh, Ruggeri uh, of Francesco Ruggeri, and I use like uh, like him, the black poplar wood. It's very typical wood uh, from the Po River, and I cut this wood uh, in my garden. <laughs> I have two trees <laughs> of this wood, and I I cut, and yes, and I use because I I like. Uh, I like very, very much also the, the sound of this. Uh, uh -huh. It's very... Promising. The, yes. <laughs> I use also uh, uh, willow. Willow? Willow wood, very, very beautiful willow wood. Wow. Yes. This is, for me, is the best wood for, for cello. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Willow. Willow, yes. Ruggeri, uh, in the, in the, in the oh. label, uh, his, his surname, uh, soprannome in Italiano, mm -hmm. uh, detto il per, maybe because he, he used uh, the pear wood. Huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. I use also pear wood. The, uh, here I have a, a, a viola. This is pear wood. Made from the wood of a pear tree. Pear, pear trees, yes. This one is very particular wood. Very, it's very brown. Yes. Uh -huh. This wood comes from uh, no, northern uh, Italy. Varese, Como, Varese. Yes. I buy a tree of this uh, wood and I cut in my garage uh, uh -huh. in the underground. I have uh, pieces for for cellos. I think this the violin need a, mm, wood very strong, but cello is a bass instrument and need more more soft wood. Mi sono spiegato, non so. Yeah, I, this is my idea. I, I think it is the idea uh, of the all the. Master in Cremona. Yes, I, I think with my personal uh, idea is uh, that uh, Ruggeri, Francesco Ruggeri and Andrea Guarneri is the very big master in uh, the m m construction of cellos in, uh, in Cremona in 70. Uh, what is the yes, for me is the, the very very big mice, Stradivari for violin, but I think Ruggeri and Andrea Guarneri for cello. Okay, yeah. Do you agree? I can understand, I can follow this uh, thought. Uh, hmm. Otherwise, why do you uh, see that Stradivari at a certain point didn't make any cellos? Only because of his age or because he had more success selling his violins? Mm -hmm. uh, a cello is not only a bigger violin, it's a uh, there is something more there's there's one more character you have like equilibration of the sound and balance and uh, the tone itself the beauty but then on the cello you have something one more dimension which is something which uh, some cellists tell me that it is somehow an imaginary ball which is floating in front of you and you can uh, move that ball somehow uh, when they talk about the sound. So I, I've never imagined imaginary, but maybe I should. I will play better. No, yeah, it's uh, now that you probably hear this idea. I mm, have to research that. An yeah. imaginary ball in front of me. Yes. Uh, on a violin, now I know you, you're laughing here. Uh, when you play a violin, and you listen from far away and you close your eyes and you point where the sound is coming from you a good violin you will never point to the violin you always will point more up up there there mm. you you perceive that the sound comes from and cello and on the cello it is about 
a meter higher and in front of the, the bridge, somewhere in front, but not directly at the cello. When you create your sound, it's, it's, not, it's not nice, uh, economic uh, cello, I don't want now to say a Chinese cello, but let's say a very economic cello. Uh, beginners are happy when it responds very quick. And so they put the bow and they're happy that something comes out, right? Yeah. This is the main focus on a beginner. And then the more you start playing and the more you play on an instrument and the better you become, the more you actually want to uh, create your own sound with the same instrument and creating different sounds with the bow a little bit closer to the bridge, a little bit more to the fingerboard. And at that point, when you're getting to enjoy a single note, you start feeling this imaginary ball. Check it out and let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's cool. C'è ancora? Okay. Chiediamo se passiamo. You want to look inside? Sure. They're still open, you know. Somebody is still there. Come on, let's see. Where are we going? Um, Andrea Schutz, if he doesn't have to talk, he's more happy, but you can watch walk no, inside and go can, through. Come on. I love the scrolls here. Yeah. Just, we were just talking about this. He makes ah, these. about this. Tu fai queste, queste teste? Diego. Huh? Diego. 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 Wow. His, uh, his cousin. Ten years ago. Yeah. Maybe That's uh -huh. so cool. Does he have one for cello? You have a no. cello? No? Just for violin. It, it was made when I was young. Now we are here at the Via Zelli and Via Francesco Robolotti, how you can see here. At the time I was living here, there was no violin maker at all in the entire road. And I actually never considered to go into Via Robolotti to, make my op to open my shop. But nowadays there is actually in most buildings, there is a violin maker. So I think it's nice just to walk down and we can read a little bit the names and if somebody is at the door and says hey Edgar come in then great Erika Riccardi uh, is one shop so it's interesting to think that within 30 years so many violin makers uh, came into this road Luigi Aquilino is also more or less my age I think Diego Tagé is a Cremonese. The name looks not very Italian, but is, he's super 100% Cremonese. And what do you he, Cremonese? What do you mean by that? I've heard that word a lot. Cremonese is one who is native from Cremona. I'm actually native from Austria, and I'm proud to be Austrian. Bruce Carson from the United States. Okay. And um, he's very uh, he's an expert when it comes to instruments from the 17th century. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say a very reliable um, expert. Then Arturo Ponce is, is a bow maker. I see. I was going uh, to Arturo bow makes makers? very often together with Pasquale Sardone together the fair. Close to be closed, but we can have a quick look inside. Come on. If you don't know that here is a violin uh, maker's supply shop, you wouldn't know about the door, you know, you, you have to know, yeah? you have to be inside. But you get in and then you can get all the tools and wood for double bass. This would be like a double bass for a competition, shop.com or .it or something. And then you, you, you have an online shop and uh, it's a very small, tiny market. But worldwide people know this shop and they go there and they write and uh, here you can get the wood. Okay, yes, of course. Tranquilo, no, tranquilo, tranquilo. He is just choosing quick some wood. This is only a very tiny part of wood what they have. They have everything actually outside of town mm. and then they have um, most of the wood outside and then they bring it. If, if, I, if I need something specific then I tell them what I need and then they bring it the next day. And this is all only for violin and cello? Violin, right? cello, double bass, uh, spruce, uh, back, poplar for the double bass, like you know, uh, Pasquale was talking about poplar here, you could make a, a, a one-piece uh, poplar bass with ribs, you can 
you wouldn't imagine how big these uh, those are the ribs for a base for the ribs for a base in one piece you have the upper part the C and the lower part all in one piece and then these pieces are all already seasoned so you can tell that they have been outside and then they put on the, the year 2018 or what is it yes and then you have it and they have it probably outside under the sun and so when we, we make an instrument like a Guarnieri uh, Lord Wilton, we want a specific uh, maple. If we make a Stradivari Hallier, then we want something different. If the customer wants super large flames, yeah, we, we have to search. So we go from one to another until we found the piece. This one here is super large flamed. I yeah. see that, yeah. What do you mean by flame? The flame, this was this what you see, because the years go down like this and then the mm -hmm. years are have like waves and there's a way to cut the wood to make it to accentuate that yep i see okay oh thank you i'm this is a treat first time i came to cremona i wandered into the shop by accident it was in a different location and i was amazed that you could walk into a shop and buy violin wood and then you get also the resins and the glue this is from bones Ok. Ah, wow, che carini questi recipienti. Mi piacciono? Mi piacciono. Sì. Ah, mm -hmm. looks like this. Oh, okay. Already in small quantities. Yeah. Artists use this and they solve it in warm water and then they put it on the linen. When they have mm -hmm. the first the frame, then the linen and then they put a layer of this one on top of it. And here, the, the, this one is much clearer. Yeah. And this right here is the cola is this a, di... The, Col, coniglio. coniglio. Coniglio, rabbit. Coniglio. Rabbit glue, and this is so bones. You're not the first luthier that's tell me that rabbit glue is the preferred. Yeah, because it's light and very strong, but it doesn't have to be too strong and too hard. So, like for instance, the fish glue is the strongest from all, but is brittle, and you don't want a brittle glue. You want strength but also quite elastic. This is the, 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 the skin and these are the bones. You have a little bit this. So one is the bone. Mm -hmm. Which is the bone? This one. That's the bone and the other one's from the skin. Yeah, and skin. what's the differences of the two? Ah, good question. Okay. Personal preference. It's a preference of, yeah. but it's important when you're using animal-based glue for these instruments because it's reversible, reversible. so you can yeah. reopen a joint re-glue yeah. it and there's not a problem if you have it like with a white glue there's a, like a chemical reaction and yeah. then there's a thin layer of glue you don't want that mille grazie we had a little tour and this was only one part of Cremona. certainly and then you have a, a, a different area and there are different makers and then on the other square on the other side there's in these tiny rows also many makers but it's a little bit less um, easy to find them so certainly if you walk through Cremona and you look all the bells then maybe you find the lutaio which is the Italian word for violin maker and then you ring the bell and you ask if they have a cello or a violin or whatever you search yeah so I guess next time we'll go on the other part of the town yeah we I think we have to yeah Thank you. <laughs> and I show you where I've worked for 10 years on the other side of the square with my colleague. Yeah. Thank you, Edgar. You're welcome. See you in Cremona. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.